Welcome back, True Believers and Spectacular Spidey fans, to another very special and extremely exciting Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales related video. And as you can see, clear as day from the thumbnail, I do today have the immense honor of being able to fully interview none other than Rio Morales herself from Spider-Man PS4, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, and the most recent Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales with, of course, Jacqueline Pignol, who took time out of her incredibly busy schedule to actually sit down and talk to me about the ins and outs of working as the face and voice, the actress overall, as the role of Rio Morales and her overall perspective of the franchise in its entirety. And I could not be happier that I've actually been able to talk to someone so talented as her about these incredible games and just hearing her opinions about these titles gives me, as a fan, massive amounts of joy. But before we actually begin the interview, I do want to give a major shout out to my main man and fellow Spidey Squad co-founder, Vigilante Spider, for actually helping me set up this entire interview in the first place. And without him, this whole video would not be possible. So thank you so much, dude. You are the best. And for all you watching, please, I highly, highly recommend that you go follow him on Twitter and his Instagram. His social media links will be put in the description below. And same goes for Jacqueline and all her amazing links as well in the description too. But until next time, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Please enjoy the interview. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, and subscribe to the channel for more amazing content like this. And until next time, peace out. Welcome back, True Believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another amazing Miles Morales-related video, and I'm sorry that my voice cracked because I can't hold back my excitement for this amazing special guest that we do have with us today, none other than the one, the only, the amazing, the sensational Jacqueline Pignol, who you may all know as Rio Morales from Spider-Man PS4, as well as the recently released Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and congrats on the next-gen release as well of Spider-Man Remastered. So now, fans who may have not been able, able to actually experience the main game at launch back in 2018 can now fully dive into it all over again, but in next-gen. So, Jacqueline, thank you so much for actually agreeing to this interview. It means the world to me they're actually here with me today. Oh, thank you for having me, Evan. I'm very excited to see you kind of in person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, and to be here chatting with you. It's honestly a dream come true for me personally, having been able to just interact with the amazing people behind this game from the writers, developers, but mainly the cast, because it does feel sincerely like a tight-knit family from Yuri as Peter and Najee as Miles and you as Rio, bringing such heart and soul to these characters genuinely makes it feel like a passion project come to life. Like, with these games being made in such a heartfelt way, I just couldn't imagine anyone else in the role other than you. So thank you so much for all the work that you do. Oh, thank you. It's very exciting. I um, did not expect to have Rio Morales be received the way she has been, so it was a very big surprise. You know, I do my job because I love it. I give myself over 110% to the roles um, so they can live through me and come out to the viewers within me. And um, it's just been a really wild ride, but a fun one. And with that said, I do want to just kind of give you like a brief mini like analytical view as to how big of an impact these games have actually made within not only just fans and their overall reception of it, but just the gaming industry as a whole, because you are also a multi-talented individual with live action roles, but also your role here as Real Morales in the gaming industry, kind of in a different medium altogether. So just to give you some perspective, I don't know if you've kept up with the overall general reception of the game, but Spider-Man PS4, the main game in 2018, has sold over 20 million copies worldwide and is officially the highest selling superhero game of all time within oh, the United States and just in general with how big of a success that game has done for fans and just overall critics. And Miles Morales recently, since uh, this, uh, November of 2020 when it first came out, to now has sold over 4 million copies, and probably more since that number was first garnered, showcasing how a standalone spinoff game with this character, who isn't as popular as Peter Parker but still is relatively beloved within the comics community, has gained such praise amongst fans and gamers alike and for you specifically you're in both of these games not just miles <laughs> yeah. or spider-man but you're in both of them combined how does it feel 
to have such beloved reception and have you viewed as this iconic character in games that truly resonate so dearly to fans and gamers across the globe? Well, first, you've surprised me with the numbers because I don't keep up with that part of it only because... I don't know. I guess it's not something I look into, you know. I, like I said, I do my job and I love it. And then I, I know it's liked and I know it's well received and I know people like it. And I also know I cannot find a PS5 anywhere for myself and I have to borrow Same. it when we want to play. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I, that's sort of a good sign. Right. Um, but uh, it is, I, I guess I can appreciate it more and more now. Um, what I have to say is that. I'm glad that as I got into the game when I was first cast in the first game and then the second, I didn't know or think about the scope of the game or what it meant or what it could be. Um, and for me, I guess it's kind of a blessing to, to live my life that way uh, for this because I'm able to just give you real Morales from the heart. Um, I'm able to bring the writer's ideas and, and creativity and the story to life as best as I can. And maybe because we have that tight-knit family that you're talking about, the writers, the director, um, Chris Zimmerman, she was amazing. She knows how to speak to actors in a way that we are able to bring out of ourselves things we didn't even know we could deliver. So um, when all of that then translate, translates into what you see because the animators step in and the creative directors, it's because we are all just giving ourselves over to this. And, and then you guys get to see what we made. <laughs> and we love every single second of it. I can confirm you and guarantee that for sure. And it's so cool that you bring that up with, it's like a, a tandem between the actors, the writers, the animators, the artists, the sound designers, everything to make this one cohesive experience. But for you, when you audition for the role and how the writers are portraying Rio in comparison to her comics counterpart is kind of a new take on the character that we're not really used to, but it's very welcomed amongst the community because of how passionate she is about her home and her family and just how much she conveys just such strength and independence amongst her, you know, common folk and just her son, Miles, and how much she cares about the community around her. Did you, by any chance, have any minor uh, involvement into, I want to do this with Rio, or maybe Rio wouldn't do this, but maybe she would do that in terms of how she was portrayed in both the first Spider-Man game and Miles. Did you have any, like, uh, writer-director communication between the two and have, like, any input to her finalization? Yes. Um, I think once, you know, I was booked in the role in the first game and we sort of, you know, I get my feet wet with what we want to establish in the story. Um, when the Miles Morales game came on, I think that the creative team did sit down with me and as we're reading the script, there are things that didn't feel organic or that just um, between Najee and I, even our relationship that we could bring into life better. In it. And by better, I'm just saying it was tweaks in the language or in you know something that was said or a, a, a certain type of interaction. Um, it was always well received from our director and from our writers, uh, from you know Brian. I mean, there's two Brians, but um, <laughs> both Brians because they were all on stage. So we were always allowed to say hey I have a question I have a comment I wonder if we were it was always fair game for all of us to share um and I think that that also brought us closer you know I didn't have a lot of scenes with Yuri mm. um but the few times that we we're able to be there um you know I love Yuri I've known him for ages like he's a wonderful man and um there was just a sense that even his presence as Peter Parker gave us license to live in that world. It was like he was our door to like, okay, we're in your world now. Like we just want to be a part of adding to that. You know, we don't want to make up our own. This is what Peter Parker set the stage for. Um, so there was a lot of respect on our end as actors to come in and learn what are our parameters? What is the world that we're living in so we can enhance it? not make it different, not bring something new that doesn't belong. It's more like how do we make it better in what it already is. And that's what I love about it so much is because we have the comics, we have the movies, we have the cartoons, and now there's such a huge emphasis on the games. How much can these stories truly convey a brand new narrative that hasn't necessarily been seen before in any form of media? And that's what intrigues me the most as a fan is how captivating that you as the player are in these universes. You are 
Peter, you are Miles, and in a sense, you are also Rio. You are Aunt May. You are Otto Octavius, and these other side characters you get to interact with because you get to personally connect with them through your actions by doing these missions and walking around and talking yeah. to the people at feast, for example, and even in like certain things in Miles's life with people like Finn and Genki and his mom all tailored together in such a tight narrative that really makes you feel like not only, of course, you're Spider-Man, but you are Peter Parker. You are Miles. You are these characters that in a way are you. You or the player are them synchronized right as the player you get to step into my shoes for a little bit or mm -hmm. you know each each of the characters shoes um and the other thing too that i love is that the writers just made i feel from my perspective as an outsider if, I, if i'm looking at the game like aunt may and genki and rio they just give us a sense of like that's real life they're grounded they're the people that you fall in love with and you're rooting for and that's why when anything happens you want Miles to succeed. You want Peter Parker to, you know, get do whatever he has to, good or bad, to save these other characters and to save everyone around them that we've fallen in love with or, you know, it, it has such heart, you know. Uh, that's what I love about the stories. And that that's movie. And that's such a testament to Rio's character as well because from the comics, she's usually portrayed as a nurse or an EMT who does help people, but in a different way. Not from like the superhero side of things where she can lift buildings and pull people out of car crashes, but she still <laughs> helps people in, in a very, you know, intimate and very personal way. And now what I love about these games is that it's even more enhanced in such a progressive manner where she's a teacher in the first game, and then in the second game with Miles, she becomes a candidate for city council. And congrats, by the way, spoilers, that you yes. win that by the end of the game. You're now officially <laughs> part of the city council. So seeing that evolution also connect with Miles as well. He's evolving from kind of like this nerdy kid who also is very smart and artistic in the first game, and then he's evolving into his own superhero. And Rio's doing the same thing, but she doesn't have any power. She's just doing what she feels is right at home in her community of Harlem. And it's cool, too, because from what I recall, you are also from New York. If I remember, Jackson Heights, is that correct? Yes, yeah. yes. My family, my parents met there in Queens. So, I'm, yeah, from Queens. That's amazing. So now. how does it feel to have that dichotomy between you and Rio in the sense that not only are you voicing her, you're also as her. We see you fully in that role, visualized for eternity, pretty much in that role as the character right? in the game. So how does that feel to have that type of overall element of acting involved in the gaming realm that's kind of different from live action? Or just how does that feel to have that character grow in such a unique way? You know, it's funny because it took me back to my roots. And so I had to do some some of my own digging up. of, of Just t getting in touch with your roots is something we sort of forget about, you know, you just get so caught up in your day to day. But when you go back and you look, when I started reading the script and then, you know, Abuelita was from Puerto Rico. And so you had to, you know, revisit all that. And then moving from Brooklyn to Harlem, even just that move, even within New York, it can be really different because of just the neighborhoods and the, um, the language, you know, there's more diversity in certain areas than others. So they took me back because when I go back to Queens, that's how I feel going from Los Angeles when I visit Queens. You know, it just takes me back to where, you know, you can go anywhere and find restaurants that have this, the, the, the Latin food anywhere. It's harder to find that in LA for me because, you know, my family is uh, from the Caribbean, South America. So you're just like the smells and the people and the music and the shops and the, all that really brought to life. When, there's a scene when he's walking and through the through the streets, and you can hear them. And I was like, oh, "That's what it's like." I mean, that's what it's really like. You know, yeah. so it was really fun to connect with that. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell everybody a little a little kind of secret thing that Ooh. I was I was caught up. Um, you know, when we start tweeting and saying fun things, and the game came out, somebody in New York was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's this?" And they put a little clip of the game where Rio says, hey, Miles, and could you get me one of those um, euros from that or my favorite euro place? And somebody called me out and was like, whoa, is this something I didn't know about? Or, or she said something like New Yorkers. Is this some, some New Yorker thing I didn't know about? And I didn't know what she was talking about. But here's the thing. I didn't catch myself. <laughs> I've been in L.A. too long. <laughs> and... Uh, to all the fans, um, 
Euro is how we say it on the West Coast, and Gyro is how you say it on the East Coast. Aha! Aha! <laughs> catch twenty two. So Look bam. at that, and and bam, and Rio Morales didn't catch that. That's a little. <laughs> and speaking <laughs> of of heritage, we do get a lot more about that in. Miles Morales, that wasn't originally shown in the first game. And granted, that's because the first game revolved around Peter and his story and Ant-Man and those characters. But we got little bits of hints of that with Miles and his mom's relationship. And then it totally expanded, blew out of the water in Miles with such love and passion put into Harlem that he's now living in in New York City. And the overall just world feels so different and more, you know, overall just so packed with culture that wasn't in the first game. And also, I don't know if you know this, but it was confirmed by the you know art director of Insomniac and Brian Horton, the creative director, that the Miles Morales suit, the shape that it makes, is actually designed that they put a narrative implication with that. It's based off the Puerto Rican flag. So it has that kind of triangle shape oh, to kind of fantastic. mix well into the costume. I did not know that. See, they think of everything. They think of everything. I don't know how just... they do it. Oh, they're madmen, so good. geniuses. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. So and how the writers are too, Ben and Mary. Yes. And, I mean, there's a whole team of writers that were just gold. They really did. Um, when you asked me earlier and made me think that there were times when they would turn to us and say, "Would Rio say it like that? Is that something that felt?" And we would and we would talk about it. And sometimes it felt okay if we were at the table read, but then once you're on stage and you're rehearsing and you the physicality of everything it just changed the, the lingo or something we were saying. And we had freedom to play with that and do a take like that. So wow. then they, they could choose from their original writing or something that came organically to us. So that was fun. And it's cool that they give you that much freedom for such a massive property that's Marvel, really. You know, like there's all of, obviously, of course, the movies and the recent shows and the cartoons. But this game just allows so much creativity and depth that I've never really personally seen anywhere else amongst any other entertainment format. And having you at the forefront of that as Rio in such a heartfelt role just makes it all the more worthwhile and with that in mind is there a particular moment in the game either the first game or miles that you have that's like one of your favorite moments either with working with naji or any of the other supporting cast or maybe even just how the game looks in general or just some of the story beats that are included because there's so much um there's so much you know every day that i leave work i literally i'm like i'm so emotional and i have to i'd have extra tears that i had to let out in the car and my <laughs> home because because it just was with me still, you know? Right. But I, with the day th that we filmed the scene where I see him in his suit for the first time, and I think he's hurt and I go to him, that scene, I mean, I feel it even in my chest right now as I'm telling you about it. It's like, oh, there was this connection and this unspoken chemistry that Gandhi and I established as mother and son. It was such a moment for us. Wow. Know? Um, I don't remember doing too many takes of it. It was just more about doing the different cuts uh, for the angles and the cameras. But that was one of my absolute favorite scenes to shoot with him because the element of surprise, you know, as an actor is not the easiest thing to bring to life because right. if you're aware of it. You're going to create the element. of. But to me, there was always something in the emotion and the connection between Miles and Rio that surprised me in every take um and i just love that moment when i saw it in the game i had i cried i really did i i i just saw it and i thought oh my gosh that's right we lived that we, we yeah that was cool and and did your relationship with naji bolster that by any chance like connecting with him as miles and you are also a, a mother yourself if i do remember correctly so yes, did yes. you draw upon those motherly instincts to captivate an even more engaging type of connection with miles not only as his own person and, and your son metaphorically in the game but also as you find out oh my god he's spider-man or he's a spider-man that's putting his life at risk and oh my god i could lose the only one that i have left since jefferson davis is you know what happened exactly. to him sadly like how's that feel it's it, it was a moment for 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 rio as we are that that you think oh my gosh what is my son doing what it what, what's at risk here you know and with naji we had such a good rapport every day that i saw him on stage and at work we, we always had that mother daughter sort of thing and he would call me mom you know and, and i go with it because it helps sustain character 
and um, he was always so sweet and so um, kind and chivalrous, and I just love that. I use all of that to feed and nurture that relationship that you feel toward a son. Um, and I, I don't even, as a mom, and I don't know if other mothers can tell you this, your own mom, you don't have to do anything to feel a motherly or protective love towards someone in that role in your life because it, it just lives in you. I don't have to like think of my son or recall any, it just, there's something in me and those mama bear claws are ready to come out. And I mean, just, <laughs> so, so that part was not hard, but um, definitely <laughs> when you, when you work with an actor as, as Naji is and that chemistry that was just always there, it helps you deliver a much better performance. And even more in the sense that it's in this, uh, you know, acting stage with the motion capture suits. Because again, you're the voice and face of Rio incarnate in the game, and you, I'm assuming, you have to wear the suits with the other actors on stage yeah. to deliver that such amazing performance. Is that was there like any odd adjustment to that at first, or did you get used to it really quickly, or how did it feel versus doing a scene that you would normally do in live action just? as a character compared to kind of something more hands-on with this? I think you just get used to it. And I've done motion capture quite a bit now. So it, it kind of just came second. I don't even feel or see the cameras or the weight of them or all that, you know, you just go with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I, when I first did a, a, a motion capture, yeah, there's definitely getting used to and adapting and everything. But this, um, I don't even remember having the equipment on me. And it was there because there, you know, it's big stuff all around you. But that's how uh, real and settled and just in it we were, you know. So wow. for me, that didn't have any, I don't even remember it. <laughs> that's incredible because it, it, it's such a seamless experience in that way that you're just in the moment there as Rio and Najee's there as Miles and you're just doing your thing and that's incredible to see it just be pulled off so seamlessly in the final product I wouldn't even think that there's such like a hard process with the animators and the character riggers and all that but it just came off beautifully so your performance again thank you for delivering such thank a captivating you. character um and I guess one final question and I might might get into trouble for this one, but of course uh -oh. we don't know for <laughs> sure whether or not anything could happen after Miles Morales within this game's universe. But if uh, you had to see where the story could go forward, how would you like to see Rio continue her journey? Now she's in the candidacy of City Council of New York, and she's there doing her thing, trying to save people just like her son is, of course, but in her own way. Um, how would you like her to see her character continue in, in any way, shape, or form, if you're allowed to even speak upon that? Um, yeah, you know, I, I haven't even imagined it or thought that, that it was going any further. Um, but if, if you're talking in the land of if you could, you know, or if, if something, I guess for me, if, if Rio even, um, she's kind of like that voice like Jefferson Davis is for Miles, that no matter where he goes and what he does, if he's doing it because his mom and dad are right here and right here, and that in some way Rio has sort of planted that sense of being a good person and doing right and saving others, no matter what you have to do, but it's because you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, I guess she's still she's still present, you know. So whether Rio is present or not, um, it would be nice to to know that that Miles carries that on. Um, but as the character, if the character were to ever continue, it would be nice to see a nice, strong Latina woman carrying on, having a voice, being a voice for the voiceless and advocating for, you know, regular humans with no powers. But what they don't realize is they do have power, power in numbers, power in strength, power in speaking up and feeling represented in their community and making a difference just by being who they are. And I, that's why I think I love the message about, not just for the games, but Spider-Man in general. You know, the taglines, be greater, be yourself. And of course, with great power comes great responsibility. That's not just Uncle Ben saying, oh, you have spider powers, just be strong and do good things. That relates to anyone, anywhere in the world. Just you have the strength mentally, physically, emotionally to do what you think is right. And you have the power to change the world. And that's what I just love about the character of Spider-Man. Just these incredible games that I've been lucky enough to play. And just 
talk to amazing people like you about. So again, thank you so much, Jacqueline, for your time and just kindness and just passion as a, a whole. Thank you so much. Thank you, Evan. You're awesome. And you excite me. And I love following you on Twitter because I find out more from you than I would from <laughs> <laughs> oh. any of those guys. I'll, I'll make sure to but, keep doing a good job. <laughs> yes, you guys are awesome. I love it. I love the Spidey Squad and I, I stay <laughs> tuned so I know what's going on. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Jacqueline, okay. you also have actual personal projects that you are a part of with your amazing canine condition. I believe it's a podcast or a, a docu-series. Yes. Um, Both. Is that anything that you want to briefly describe for people who may not know about it or that you want to like, kind of promote a little bit? Oh, thanks. Sure. I mean, of course. You know, I'm a very big uh, animal lover. I'm very passionate about dogs. And um, I will tell you that uh, as a Latina, you know, with parents who grew up in Latin America, we weren't exposed to dogs a lot. Um, Dogs were always just like the street dogs that you ran into or the strays. And um, but uh, I grew up not liking dogs and being afraid of them. And now I'm one of the most I mean, I will advocate and try and save any dog possible. I have six of my own. So the podcast and the documentary really inspired by the adoption of my own dogs. And it's to promote dog adoption and it's to educate people on how the how we live our lives really does impact every aspect of it. So to choose something that you're passionate about and to speak up for it and to do something good toward that thing that speaks to you. So for me, it's dogs, it's animals, and anyone who loves them would benefit from listening to an episode. And I give very inspiring kind of monologues. You know, we have themes like Um, think outside the box or don't judge a book by its cover or be the the change you want to see in those, you know, or in people. Um, So things like that. I just try to marry things and uh, be a good example for for my son and for Miles Morales. Just kidding. (laughs) So you're you're saving the day in the game and in real life as well. That is beautiful. You know, trying to save canines, you know, one at a time, but I do love them. The podcast is doing really well, and it's on all the podcast channels where anyone can listen to the canine condition. Amazing. And the documentary is in uh, post-production, so we're editing Ooh. now. It'll be out soon. Well, I, I can't wait for me personally to check it out for myself, and I'm sure every one of you viewers are definitely going to give it a watch because it sounds incredible. Thank you, Jacqueline, again so much for taking time out of you your bet. day to do this. Again, if you guys want to follow Jacqueline, her social media accounts for Twitter and Instagram, I believe, are the main two you use, is mm-hmm. at Jackie yeah. Pinol. Yes. Online? Yes. Perfect. Nailed it. Um, I'll leave that in the description so you guys can check it out as well. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Is there any final words you want to give to the fans who just love you as Rio and just love these games in general? Because we truly do appreciate just everything that you do for these games and just your inclusion in them couldn't be matched by anyone else. Oh, thank you. All I can say is don't ever, ever give up on any dream that you have. You can change your dreams and your goals but keep having them and keep pursuing them and keep going at it because there's, I never thought I would be where I am. Um, but I had lots of dreams as a kid and I had lots of goals and they just changed. But here I am pursuing and doing things that I love. And I think that everybody should always, always believe that they can do anything they want. Enough said. Enough said. Well, thank you, Jacqueline, so much. Again, thank you all for watching. Please follow her on every social media platform you can because she (laughs) definitely deserves all your support. And until next time, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Stay spectacular, Spidey fans. Peace out. You did good, Spider-Man. Thanks. Who is he? That guy? (sighs) He's our Spider-Man.